from Chris Hopkins. Chris, if you can come up. So Chris has been uh, working with WebRC technology like myself for a really long time. He, he runs and leads uh, product management and strategy at one of the first commercial WebRC companies, Cafe X. I asked him to talk a little bit about, to be honest with everyone here about WebRTC. Is it really that cool? I mean, I'm a, I built a business promoting it, but maybe I shouldn't be. So Chris is going to give us an, an honest opinion and uh, talk about some of his experiences. So please welcome Chris Hopkins. Can you use this, or if you'd rather walk around, you can use this. And the color. Yeah. Um, thanks, everybody. Nice showing tonight, as always. Thanks for hanging in there. Um, so, honest feedback, don't you? All right. So, Dave Michaels, this past week, just said that WebRTC is a failure. We, you guys can go home. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, the thing is, I, it's not a failure, but it's definitely not perfect. And we have a lot of experience at Cafe X deploying WebRTC in the enterprise. And I think what um, what Dave Michaels is talking about, the rough edges, really um, the three main things that we encounter a lot with WebRTC when we go to an enterprise. So um, now Dave's an interesting guy, but uh, you know I don't think his expectation is that he thought WebRTC would, would remove all the phones on everybody's desk but he did think it would pervade into the enterprise a lot more. And uh, what we see is, again, the browsers that were forgotten, we see some uptick you know, here at Apple, and I think that those are important notes to make. But IE 11, um, even 10, Chris was talking about Comcast contact centers having IE 6 still. Um, anyway, we have, uh, and then when you start to go into multi-party conferencing, so again, if you don't want to use an MCU or a selective forwarding unit and you want to create a mesh conference, you really peak out at around four concurrent parties in a conference, right? Um, has anybody tried that? Anyway, we'll, get, we'll talk more about that in a bit. And then the architectures can get really complex. So that browser situation where IE and Safari are being utilized is absolutely exacerbated inside the enterprise. Look at what Internet Explorer does. So 75%, 70% of the enterprises that were in this particular survey showed that they use IE predominantly. Now we are seeing a move from the older versions of IE to IE 11 but that still doesn't help us with WebRTC. For Cafe X, we've had to go and create plugins to adjust to that. And we also have plugins for Safari, but as you know, that's not an ideal user experience. And of the top objections affiliated with WebRTC in terms of what's growing, those same browsers, IE and Safari, are one of the major reasons why enterprises won't adopt it. So they're waiting for something to happen. Now, a lot of, a lot of people will drag their feet just because they're saying, this, you know, look at the top, the standards are incomplete, but meanwhile, we have how many applications are being used and utilizing WebRTC WebRTC despite the standards, but I do think that the, um, the IE and the Safari really are a dragging feature, and we encounter it every day. So um, to wash this out and to see it through, um, you, we kind of got to keep holding our breath, right? So there's a lot going on at Google. Google's really pushing the limits. Uh, Microsoft is starting to introduce ORTC, but simply an edge, and then Apple, we're seeing some, we're seeing some uptick and anything Apple would do in terms of giving us access to the camera, um, let's see, in terms of get user, user media would be, you know, welcomed. Uh, we can just get started. In a mesh conference, really try it. So when you try to go and have multiple parties uh, talking to each other without a selective forwarding unit or without an MCU involved, have, you'll see what happens. So I can get to about six on my laptop. Anybody else get higher? Have tried that? No? Yes? With YouTube broadcasting, but real time with everybody talking at the same time? Okay. Yeah, and we see, um, we see about four to five on a typical Haswell. If you have a Core 2 Duo, it's getting even lower. Intel has uh, made some claims that about 30% of the systems that are out there and in people's hands actually have processors that are three years or older. So that means 30% of the population will peak out at about th two to three parties. 
when you're setting up, again, a mesh. And you'll listen to it. You can hear it, your fan will start going on. Um, you'll watch your battery drain. When we first started doing WebRTC and we were at some of the first conferences, I remember someone talking about an Android tablet. They started doing multi-party on an Android. And while the Android tablet was plugged in, the battery would drain. <laughs> so, so what happens is, again, we start to focus. And this is where um, it holds true for Cafe X. There's a reason why we focused on contact center implementations with the WebRTC. And that's because those tend to be a one-on-one -on -one engagement. Right? You tend not to have multiple people talking to a customer service agent. You definitely don't want multiple agents um, on the phone with a customer. That's highly inefficient. So that use case holds really true, and it really helps us uh, refine. So again, is the use case convenient to the technology, or is the con technology convenient to the use case? The other thing is that the architecture gets really complex quickly. Um, so if you take basic WebRTC, you'll see the WebRTC triangle. This is not the triangle of despair that Chris talked about. This is the, um, this is the triangle of hope. <laughs> but uh, when peers can't connect inside the enterprise, right, because of firewalls, variety of different things, all of a sudden we start introducing five different server types. And they all scale independently. So imagine being me, walking to a customer meeting, and I'm talking to some poor procurement person in IT, and I'm talking to the architect who's been there, and he's had three vendor meetings prior to me, and I'm starting to talk about a signaling server, a stun server, a turn server, a media server, all, all when peers can't connect to each other. And I'm pretty sure he turns to his buddy and he goes and says, I'm, I've been in three meetings today, and he just talked about beer, not peers. It's, um, it's a lot to swallow for an enterprise. Again, wh where the turn server resides, that's often in the cloud. Um, they, have, uh, they have reservations about using an open source product. They want something that's supported, even though that, that is a wonderful piece of software that's running. It is highly efficient. They just don't quite trust it yet. Um, and then the architecture really gets this complicated. So we went from the triangle of hope to the um, to the many beautiful pieces of software that we need to deploy inside the enterprise. And um, again, uh, look, look at this architecture. So you have your web servers, you have your stun and turn servers. Often those two are separated. Um, in some, some architectures, you need a media gateway, right, to do transcoding. In other cases, you need an actual media server um, to handle um, Transrating to stitch video together to you need a single for, a selective forwarding unit, um, your signaling engine, and they all scale independently. So your signaling, you know, that can handle up to a thousand concurrent sessions in a single server. But if you're doing transcoding, you can get about two concurrent sessions per core on the, on that side. Um, these are all pretty standard industry metrics. Again, some vendors are much better; others are uh, others are a little worse than that. But it's hard. And um, so anyway, that's what we do. So what I wanted to reassure you, and again, I'm keeping this quick because it is late, and is keep after it. It's nice to see so many of you dedicated to WebRTC. We're all trying our best. Refine the use cases. Find those specific use cases that actually make a difference and you know will work. Keep the architectures less complex drive toward what you can and just keep after it. We're all making this work and uh, hopefully someday we'll prove uh, Dave Michaels that he's not quite on the pulse of what's going on. So anyway, with that, uh, I appreciate your time and uh, hand it back to Chad. I, 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 th thank you for your brevity.